this in there. That means we're going forwards. We're better. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Okay. Passengers who have just joined us, welcome aboard. The car's going to back out on this. Our first trams were operated by the Sandhurst and Eagle Hawk Electric Tramway Company That's and began running in 1890. They were powered by electric storage batteries and were supposed to have enough power to run for almost 50 kilometres. Unfortunately, they couldn't cope with Bendigo's hills and could barely make it out to the suburb of Eagle Hawk before needing to be towed back to the depot by horse. As a result, the battery company closed down after only 13 weeks. In 1892, steam trams were brought in and the old battery trams were converted into trailers for them to tow. Finally, in 1903, electric trams were introduced and have been running ever since. Electric trams still had the odd dilemma. It wasn't uncommon for trams to derail back then, especially at the loops if the driver was a little bit uh, <laughs> over-enthusiastic. But it, uh, as long as one set of wheels stayed in contact with the rails, the tram still had power, and usually they would move back onto the rails. If all the wheels lost contact, well, uh, <laughs> that was another story. Yeah. such as this during the early years of the gold rush. Next stop, Tyson's Reef Precinct. If you're getting off here, pull the left-hand bell cord once. We are now passing the Tyson's Reef Hotel. Tyson's Reef is one of 17 quartz reefs that run beneath the city in a roughly south to north direction, covering an area 16 kilometers long and 4 kilometers wide. In excess of 5,000 shafts were sunk throughout the mining history of Bendigo, which represents the largest concentration of deep shafts anywhere in the world. We're now heading into Calumet Street, which leads to the former Common Wood Woodlands Factory, or Tarras. The 
was built during the Second World War. It is a world leader in defense, aerospace, and ground transportation solutions. The tramways were used to provide special services to bring workers from all parts of Bandigo to the factory. During the war, the work was top secret, but all sorts of weapons for the forces in Europe and the islands were manufactured. Since the war, the factory has continued its work. Manufacturing the Bushmaster tank, an armored patrol and combat support vehicle. These highly reliable vehicles serve the distinction in Afghanistan, Iraq, and other areas of conflict. Next up is the Bendio Joskas Temple. This Chinese place of worship was constructed in the 1870s and is one of the few remaining original buildings of its time in Australia. It is constructed with locally handmade bricks and painted red, symbolizing happiness, strength, and vitality. The Joss House remains a place of worship and is regularly visited by worshippers who travel quite some distance to pay their respects to Guangdi, the god of war and prosperity, to whom the temple is dedicated.